Welcome back to Kick and Crochet. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about different types of crochet color work. So I've got some examples here, and there are a few main types, and a few main ways that you can do color work. Um, this is an example of interlocking crochet, which is a very specific color work technique, and I'm actually not going to cover how this one is made in this video. I have a whole bunch of videos showing how to do interlocking crochet, so if you're interested, you can check that out. But a characteristic of this is that you're going to use two colors, and you're going to use the same yarn, you're going to carry it all the way across, so you're not going to have a bunch of ends to weave in. So for this square, I just had four ends, two from the start and two from the end. Um, the downside of interlocking is that it can be a little bit tricky to understand how to make the charts and to learn how to read the charts, because there's kind of specific rules about what colors can go where in an interlocking pattern. Standard crochet color work, there's kind of three main ways to do it. Um, there's intarsia, there's Fair Isle or Stranded, those can be used interchangeably, and there's Tapestry Crochet. So I have finished examples here that use um, the Fair Isle and the Intarsia, so I'll show you kind of what they look like and then I'll show you how to make each kind. So this one used Intarsia and with that um, you have separate balls of yarn for each section of color. So for this pattern, I had a, a ball of yarn for this gray, a ball of yarn for the white, and a ball of yarn for this other gray. So I had to use two separate balls of gray yarn and one separate ball of white. And if I had a bunch of different sections of different colors, I would have to use that many balls of yarn. So this is when you see pictures of people and they've wound yarn onto bobbins or whatever. That's doing intarsia. And so the benefit of this way is that you have a totally reversible project. It's gonna look the same. You're not gonna have a bunch of crazy trying to hide yarn or anything. And you also don't have um, any weird rules. Like you can just make a graph picture of whatever you want and figure out how many balls of yarn you need. So that's the technique I used for this. If you've seen the picture of my geometric um, Tunisian baby blanket, I also used intarsia for that one. So that is great. It's a great technique, but the downside of it is that it can be a little bit hard to keep all of the balls of yarn straight, especially as you turn the project over. You can get the yarn strands all twisted because they're all connected at the same time. So that can be a problem. Um, this one I made using Fair Isle or Stranded color work. So it looks basically the same from the front, right? It's just nice single crochet. Both of these were done in single crochet. However, from the back, these are called floats. So it carries these along the back. So this is only really good if it's gonna be a one-sided project. And if the distance between color changes is not very large. If this was a really big section of white with two gray on the other side, I wouldn't choose to use Fair Isle because um, if I have a really long string on the back, sometimes it can mess with the tension. It's really easy to make that back strand too, too tight and then it makes your whole project curl. So it can be really great if you have a lot of color changes in a small area. That way on this one, I can just carry the same yarn across and I don't have to have one, two, three, four, five, six separate balls of yarn like I would if I was doing the intarsia technique. The third kind that I don't have a finished example of but that I'll still show you is tapestry crochet. And in tapestry crochet, you crochet uh, over the strand of the other color. And that is nice because you can also carry both yarns along the whole way so you don't have a bunch of ends to weave in. The downside of tapestry, in my opinion, is that it is harder to make sure that the other color doesn't show through. So if I had done tapestry on this project, it would have been a little tricky to make sure that you don't see any white through the gray stitches or any gray through the white because I would have been crocheting over them, but because I did the intarsia, you can see there's just white and just gray. So there's upsides and downsides to each technique. And um, now I'm going to show you just real quick how to do each one. So again, this video isn't going to show you how to do interlocking or mosaic. Um, those are kind of specialty things, I would say. But I'm just going to go over the three main types of color work. That's Fair Isle, also called Stranded, Tapestry, and Intarsia. So I have here just a small sample of single crochet. And now if I wanted to do... Let's say I'm doing intarsia, so I have a separate ball of yellow yarn. I'm going to have yellow in the middle of this sample. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to crochet up until I'm ready to switch to yellow. 
let's say that's going to be on this next stitch. So I'm not going to finish the stitch, stitch, this is just like changing colors. I'm going to leave this yarn attached and I'm going to finish the stitch with my new color. And now I'm going to keep working just with this new color. And now let's say I want to switch back to gray here. Now if I'm doing intarsia, that means I'm going to have a separate ball of gray yarn. So let me get another section of gray yarn here. Okay, so I have a second ball of gray yarn here and I will attach this on. And now I'll keep going with this gray. So now I have three different balls of yarn attached to the same project. And so I'm only working with one ball at a time, and it's going to look the same on the front and the back, but I have three balls attached at the same time. So now when I turn around, and I come back along the other side, as I come back, maybe I'm going to switch to yellow on this next stitch. So I'll work, and now I like to keep all of my yarn strands kind of organized so they don't get all tangly. I'm going to switch to my yellow again the same way just by finishing the stitch with yellow. And then I'd keep going with my yellow. Until I'm ready to switch back to my white to do my last stitch of yellow and this is where I'll switch back to the gray. Just pick up the yarn from the row below and keep going. And then I would keep going with gray. So this is intarsia or um, where you have multiple balls of yarn. So for each different color section, I have a separate ball of yarn that I'm using. So this is intarsia. This is what I did for this mug rug. Okay, so let's go back and see what would happen if I was instead doing Fair Isle or Stranded. Remember, those, are, those can be synonymous. So now I'm only going to have two balls of yarn and I'm going to do basically the same design here. So I've got my gray yarn, untangle myself a little bit here, and now I'm ready to switch to yellow. So this part, part is exactly the same. I'm just going to drop my gray, finish the stitch with yellow, and then I'll keep going with yellow. But let's pretend I now just want to do a few stitches and now I want to switch back to gray. Well, now I'm gonna, not going to finish that stitch, but instead of getting a new ball of gray yarn, I'll just take this strand from the back and pull it over. I don't want to pull it too tight because that'll mess up my stitches. Just gently pull it over and finish the stitch with that strand. And this is how it makes the flutes on the back. And so then I can keep going with gray. And now maybe I want to switch back to yellow. So I'll drop my gray and I'll pick up my yellow. So with Fair Isle, I'm going to only have two balls of yarn attached, or if you were using more colors, you could have more, but however many colors you're using, that's how many balls of yarn. So I don't need to have a separate ball of yarn for each section of each color. The trick for this is to make sure you keep all of your color changes, all of your floats on the same side of the project. You don't want some on the front and some on the back, right? So you have to keep them organized. And I also like to try to keep one color on top. So if I'm working. So I'm switching back to gray. I'll keep going with gray. And I'll switch back to yellow. So I'm keeping the, the yellow on top with my floats. And it just makes it look nicer on the back. Now that nobody's going to see the back, so it doesn't really matter. I just like it. So the hard thing about this is making sure that your tension for your floats is good. So you don't want these pulling too tight and you don't want them really loose because that can affect how your stitches look. But see on the front, you don't see any of that. The front looks great. So this is great for like that wall hanging, the back's not going to be shown, or for color work sweaters if you want to carry the colors along so you don't have to change and have a million balls of yarn attached. Uh, this is a really great way to do it. 
Now, the third way that I mentioned is tap tapestry crochet. And I don't have a project handy that uses it, although I have used it in some designs. So if I was doing tapestry crochet, now I would have probably been starting right from the beginning, but I'm just gonna work over my other color. So if I'm working gray, I'm gonna hold the yellow towards the back of the work, and I'll just work my gray stitches right over that strand of yellow. So I used this when I did the quintessential crossbody bag. Now I like to try and hold my other strand towards the back. It will show more on the back though, so it's not really truly reversible if you do it this way, but it shows less on the front. So now let's say I'm ready to switch to yellow. I'll drop my gray and pick up my yellow. So it's handy because the yarns stay there, and now I'm gonna work across that gray. So I'm gonna carry along my other color with me the whole time. So you won't have any floats in the back because it's basically like a float working underneath your crochet project. So if I want to change back, I just drop my yellow and pick up my gray. Now I need to make sure I work over that yellow strand. And I can switch back to yellow. You're always, and no matter which which technique you're using, you're always switching colors on the last stitch, on the last stitch of the previous color. So if you're working a section of yellow and you want to switch to gray, your last yellow stitch you'll finish with gray. There are a lot of different ways people like to turn these projects, but I usually just carry that yarn up. I don't usually do this without um, with a stitch bigger than single crochet, so it's pretty easy to kind of hide it there. And now I'm working along the back, so I will keep this yarn closer to the front. If you really want it to be reversible, then try and keep that, that yarn right in the middle, and then it will be, look the same on the front and the back. But now I'm working back, and I need to switch colors, so I'm just going to drop my yellow, pick up my gray. Now I've got to work over my yellow. So this is tapestry crochet. It is not my favorite of the color work techniques. Like I said, I have used it in some designs and it can work really well, but if I can, then I usually prefer to do intarsia or fair isle. Now intarsia can get really laborious if I had like a whole bunch of stripes and I just don't want to have that many balls of yarn, then I would do tapestry instead. Okay, so that is tapestry crochet. You can see that if you look closely, you can see the yellow yarn through the gray a little bit. And depending on how carefully you're covering that, but especially if you have high contrast colors, you are gonna be able to see the other color through a little bit. So that's something to be aware of and you can see a little bit of the gray there underneath the yellow. So if that doesn't bother you, great. Um, that does kind of bother me. So I don't do tapestry as much, although I think there is definitely a place for it. I think it is, it can be a super useful technique. So that is th the three main color work techniques in crochet. And so if you are working on this pattern set, the mug rug and the wall hanging, and there's a hot pad also, the hot pad and the wall hanging use Fair Isle and the mug rug uses Intarsia and that's because I needed it to be reversible, right? The other two, not so much, because the hot pad has a back on it, so you can hide all the floats inside, and the mug rug, the back is against the wall. So if you're doing those patterns, though, and you don't want to do those color work techniques, you could, for example, make the mug rug using tapestry crochet. It would work just fine. There would not be a problem if you really don't want to do the intarsia. Um, so you can have some flexibility. In most color work patterns, I would say there you have some options about how you want to do it. So you can be your own person. <laughs> You're your own person anyway. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful with explaining how some of the different crochet color work techniques work. And yeah, enjoy. Happy crocheting.